Well, recently the world has seen a steep rise in space launches as billionaires send crucial infrastructure like satellites and Katy Perry into orbit. <laughs> uh, but new research reveals all those launches could be leading to severe damage of the ozone layer just as it was beginning to repair. Space travel has long held noble purpose. The art of discovery, pushing the limits of human endurance, revealing set lists for your upcoming tour. I feel super connected to love. But as space launches become more frequent, researchers have discovered that repeatedly punching through the atmosphere with burning rocket fuel might actually not be great for the planet. If we see a large um, intensification of the rocket launch industry in the coming decades, which we are expecting, we will see a significant thinning of the ozone layer. Yes, the ozone layer. For anyone who loves an 80s throwback, saving the ozone layer was essentially Gen X climate change. And you were always busy trying to save the end zone layer. Ozone layer. In the 1980s, scientists noticed that the ozone layer, a shield in the Earth's stratosphere that protects us by absorbing most of the sun's ultraviolet radiation, was being depleted due to human activity. At a hearing on Capitol Hill, scientists linked the loss of ozone in part to the emission of chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. CFCs were a huge part of everyday life, used in everything from fridges and air conditioners to aerosol cans. But with fears that damaged ozone would lead to a sharp increase in skin cancer, the chemicals were banned and the ozone layer began to heal. And that was before the rise of commercial space flight. As um, rockets launch into space and the fuel is burned, many of these gases and particulates are destructive towards ozone, meaning that they're creating little miniature ozone holes. Space launches have increased dramatically in recent years. In 2019, there were 102 launches. Five years later, that figure more than doubled, and projections have them increasing exponentially, hitting 2,000 launches per year with thin the layer by up to 3%, with the worst of it over Antarctica. Given that we need a healthy ozone layer to ensure a healthy planet, um, this this really is something where we need ongoing monitoring to ensure that we're not creating future problems for ourselves. So with experts ringing the alarm bells, will the world's spacefaring billionaires take heed or will they march onwards with their holy mission? We punch a hole in the protective layer around the world, which we call the ozone layer. <laughs> oh, 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 you're there again! Isn't that right? <laughs> oh, yep. well, so it's all coming together. <laughs> Now, here to explain what is next for the ozone is our very own layer of protective gas. I think that's a compliment, uh, Dr Carl. Hey, Doc, uh, how exactly are these rockets damaging the ozone layer? They're damaging them on the way up and on the way down. On the way up, they're burning fuels such as hypergolic uh, hydrocarbons, uh, solid, uh, cryogenic, and they're putting into the atmosphere carbon dioxide, water, uh, chlorine and soot, and then on the way down, when they deorbit after five years, and they'll be deorbiting in the year 2050 at the rate of um, 10 a day, they're dumping chemicals of their burnt up uh, bodies in the atmosphere. And already we have measured that 10% of all the droplets in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere, 10% of all the droplets already contain bits of burnt up satellite re entry dust. 10% now. Wow. So does that mean that even if you could replace the fuel, so you had like a cleaner fuel, you'd still have this problem of the rockets or the satellites, the, the stuff they're made of, thinning out the ozone yeah. layer? The good thing is that people who didn't have internet before are now getting it. The bad thing is the way that we're providing it. There has to be a better way. I like the ladder to space, like you see in um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, <laughs> where you have a ladder going up and you put the satellites up via that. Um, how you bring them back, don't know yet. We, we've, we saw a problem akin to, well, the same problem really with the ozone layer in the 80s. Um, there was a big push to get rid of CFCs in that case, to, to ban the chemicals that were damaging the ozone layer. Could we achieve something like that again? Sure, but the big disadvantage is it would cut into the quarterly profits of the big companies and that seems to be sacred in this day and age. Right. So how, how do you, what's your account then of how we managed to do it in the 80s? Um, what happened was that the scientists said this is happening and the company, some 36 of them, weren't that many and they didn't have huge clout like the fossil fuel companies, so it was easy for the governments of the world, or 200 of them, to say at the Montreal Protocol, make another chemical. And the chemical company said, it's impossible. 
they were lying. And said, OK, we'll do it, and they did it, and that's how we got out of it. Hey, um, if Katy Perry had used CFCs in her hairspray, oh. <laughs> how yeah. much worse would the problem have yeah. been with her going up to space? Yeah. Um, she committed the crime of being a woman. Oh, oh come on. I know. Oh. Boo the patriarchy. Come on, <laughs> let's get woke on this. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody complained about male multi-billionaires going into space? Yeah, we've just done a whole story on it, causing a hole in the ozone <laughs> yeah, layer. Exactly. OK, I have another question for you, Doc. Uh, what, yeah. is, what is the biggest threat to humanity? Uh, the ozone layer having a hole in it or, or Sam's... Turtleneck. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, have never, I haven't seen Sam reading poetry near a crackling log fire while <laughs> drinking on a brown drink. Yeah. Uh, so well, I'd then have reply to, work to out my invitation. <laughs> 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 Dr. Carl, so good to chat. Thanks for your time.